What we're going to talk about today is the at home IV drip system that they have. This one's made by Easy Pump and all the opinions are my own. I have to take an IV. We just I've never seen one before until now. Instead of the IV hanging on a stick like that, it's under pressure of some sort. You open it up. I have a pick line that goes here, goes up my arm, around, and goes in my heart. You hook it up to clean it out, hook it up and everything. I have to have one of these every day for six weeks total. So a lot of I've never seen one of these before. An IV. The only ones I ever seen was you hang out. This you just pull out of the refrigerator, let it warm up, and then um, hook it up and it does its thing for you. So that's how this is made. Uh, here's my IV. It's a ball, as you can tell. Hose is coming out here. It's got the little shut off here for the hose and they got a flow regulator which is here on the bottom. So we're going to hook this up to this pick line right here which is the mess which is there and uh, so we're going to hook it up to here. Now the procedure is going to get a wipe, alcohol wipe clean the end off Okay, next thing I like to do is to unscrew this in here. Let's do this one first. Or she already flushed out? Yeah, well, we're going to do this. And we're going to unscrew this end here. And I like to prime this. So usually get the garbage can handy. And you just open up the valve here. Just let it drip out. Okay, so the hose is primed, so now there's no air in there. Okay, next we're going to clean this again because I contaminated it. Okay. We're going to clean this end again. And now we're going to put the saline into this which goes up to my pick line and flush it out. We always take the air out of it. Which I don't know if Donnie's seen or not. And it's dripping everywhere. Now I'm just going to push it in. I like to push it in slowly. Some people like to jam it in. I don't like that. Just push it in, stop. Push it in, stop. Push it in, stop. Okay. Take that end off. Now she's going to clean the end off one more time. We use a lot of these pads. This is how I was shown to do this. Now this end here gets screwed on to that end there. Okay, now we're all hooked up to this. Now the only thing we got to do is open the valve here. And just drop it. Just open the valve there. And I like to pull the hose out and then just rub the hose because it puts a little kink in it. This is under pressure. So we're done. This is all you do and just set the ball somewhere it don't fall. And that's it of this. Now what we're going to do next is when we get done here, then we're going to flush everything out. But that's when this bottle gets empty.
Here's my IV. As you can see, the ball is totally collapsed. So to remove it, I already unscrewed it, but I'm gonna show you anyway. You go to the valve and make sure that you shut it off. Right here, in case there's a little more pressure in there, so you don't get the stuff all over the place. I have two outputs for the pick line. We gotta clean them both. So this I'm going to remove from here to here, which I already did. I'm not going to put it back on because it's contaminated. So this is done. So you take this, throw it in the garbage. Okay, now my wife's going to clean each fitting off. She uses one pad. I yell at her when she gets too close. And clean it. And I end up holding it. She takes the saline first. And now I just make sure she don't take any of my tooth. And she pushes it in. Now some uh, go slowly and some pushes it in, which every time they do that, it makes my thing bleed. So I just recommend just pushing a little, stop, pushing a little, stop, pushing a little, stop, pushing a little, stop, and here. Uh, she did, okay. She made sure that the air was out of that syringe before she started. Now she's going to put the heparin in. That's, that flushes it, this here so that this tube don't clog. Which these tubes do clog. This one here, she pushes in and leaves a little dab right here in it because it's thick stuff and air bubbles don't like to go through it very well. So about right there. And that's done. So this one's clean now. These fittings here don't require lids where the other fittings do. So these don't have any green lids on it. This is like a check valve in there. All done with my pick line, so now the pick line is being removed. Well, she's uh, that's that's cut the bandage off. Okay, and now Ready? she's going to supposedly pull it out slowly. Jeez, it's out. It's out. Too late. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> mm -hmm. well, you know that's all it is. It. Okay. Yeah. So you wonder if you can't get anything through it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. Is that? Yeah. It, you don't want to touch it. Why? Because it's been in. I mean, it might be. I mean, you can touch look, it here. I just want to look at the end. Oh. Okay. Okay, you can dump it there. But that's only one line. So it's mm -hmm. actually one line, two, two little. Two, 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 two lumens. Two inside. Yeah. So it's just really one line. It's one, oh, it's yeah, it's one, one it's line. One hose yeah. With two through yeah. yeah. Yep. See, it has a little. Right. Okay. Weird. Uh huh. Okay. And it's not even bleeding. It's not even going to bleed for us. <laughs> there it is. There it is. <laughs> I just wanted, what I have here is the IV that they use for home injecting yourself. It's called an Easy Pump. And these, I think, sell empty, like $20 or so. Um, this is how they fill it. This is right here. This top opens up. You put the medicine in here to fill the ball. This one's full on here. This is a big ball. This is 100 mil an hour ball. So it's down here. And the way that I think it works, 
which I don't know, you have a bladder inside that's filled with the liquid. This bladder outside, which isn't full completely, is just holes it there so it doesn't get any bigger than that. There's no pressure in that at all. So out of curiosity, I'm going to poke a hole in it. Okay, here's the outer side right here, as you can tell. Got a hole, no pressure. This one in here is tight, or extremely tight, to be exact, that bag. So that's where the medicine's located. So this is like a protection bag. Next, the output's here, which everybody knows. It goes through here. This is a flow control, is what I assume. All of these are my guesstimations, because Hunter and I don't know for sure, 100%. This is a flow gauge here to let so much liquid to come out here. Also, it catches air, just in case it has some air that does come out. It's supposed to get uh, caught in here and clogged. This is the output that you unscrew. Now we're going to unscrew it. And they have this valve that you undo. As soon as you do that, the liquid should start coming out. As you can see, there's your flow, the drip. I'm on my outside porch to do this, by the way. So there's your drip. Now what we're going to do, we're going to go to this flow gauge right here. I don't know how much comes out or not, but we're going to cut this. And it probably would be a nice stream. Yeah, yeah, there you are. There's the flow gauge. Uh, as you can see, it's got a nice little stream that comes out. Okay. I turned off the, the valve here. So that's what controls the drip and hopefully get any remaining air out of it is inside of this. So that means this ball has lots of pressure in it in here still. And that's why it keeps it pressurized. Now inside the tube in the middle here, I'm not absolutely sure exactly what's in that PVC pipe. Because we know from the lid where they fill it, there's got to be a check valve and other things in there. Uh, so I'm not sure. So they only got the one bag here that holds the liquid that pushes in. It goes in the middle, you know, and the liquid goes in the middle of that pipe and then out the end. I'm not absolutely sure, except it seems like there's a lot of pressure here. And so here we go. We're going to do it. Oh, shit. Well, quite a bit of pressure. <laughs> a lot of antibiotics. At least we're going to kill the bacteria that's on the porch here. Okay, that's how this is constructed. Because on that, let's see. Never opened one of these before, so. This is new. Yeah, here's the internal bag. You can see exactly, you know, when I popped it, it popped. And this is more stretchy. This is stiffer. So when this stretches and hits this bag, it can't fill anymore. Um, and the pipe itself, it's got a split 
as you can see right here. I assume that's where the liquid comes out into the bag and then pushes back in. This probably inside here is a filter. I have no clue what's in there yet. And I know it's glued, so I don't know how much pain to get it off if I can or not real fast. Should have got to use them. <laughs> Nobody did up. But oh well. This is the first day that I felt like doing anything like this after months. I don't know. I assume it's glued or screwed or something. On here, I can't get it. But that's what it looks like. Hi there. This is Big David. I just basically want to show you where I stay now since basically May, after I got out of the hospital for COVID. And right now, it's, uh, I just got the stitches removed out of the knee part of me uh, today. And it's been two weeks since I had them in. So I had surgery two weeks ago to get rid of the MRSA out of my knee. So I just want to show you where I live, basically, and what I got to do for probably for another five months of suffering here. So if you turn towards uh, this way, at least they got a big screen TV, as you can tell. And uh, so at least I can watch TV. Over here, I have a hospital bed. And this hospital bed is has been a lifesaver and everything because the bathroom is just right around the corner if I could actually use it which I haven't been able to use it for the last two weeks after I got the knee surgery done so let me go to my lounge chair and my IV chair this is the fastest I can move can't put any pressure on this leg for six weeks. Not six weeks, I'm sorry. Twelve weeks. So, this is it. So, here's my lounge chair. Let me this out of the way. Show you the rest. I have some weights here on the floor that I do arm lifts with to get some exercise considering I'm losing all my muscles everywhere else. This is my little cart I got. Here's my bathroom. That's what I had to use for the last two weeks. I have to take an IV, which is, I've never seen one before until now. Instead of the IV hanging on a stick like that, it's under pressure of some sort. You open it up. I have a pick line that goes here, goes up my arm, around, and goes in my heart. You hook it up to clean it out, hook it up and everything. I have to have one of these every day for six weeks total. So a lot of I've never seen one of these before. An IV. The only ones I ever seen was you hang out. This you just pull out of the refrigerator, let it warm up, and then um, hook it up, and it does its thing for you. So that's how this is made, which we got to do in just a minute. So this is basically how I've been living since I got out of the hospital for COVID. And I'll still be doing this probably uh, another five months of hell. So this is what I'm up to.